Let me get to former House Speaker Tim Jones, who hopefully is nowhere near all these protests that are going on near K Street right now. Tim, how are you? Hey, I'm great, Mark. We actually uh, walked up through that area, but got through it safely and walked through Chinatown, which uh, erupted last night with the uh, the left-wing liberals uh, burning and looting and trashing everything. We got safely through that, and so we're... uh, we're north. We're just slightly north of the action. You can probably hear the sirens and the police chopper overhead. But uh, things were fine during the ceremony, except for you know some disruptions here and there. But uh, Mark, it was a wonderful ceremony. What what an incredible day to witness the peaceful transition of power on the greatest nation on the planet, the most free nation on the planet, where everybody has the right to express their opinion. You know what, Mark? I'm happy the protesters are here. I just wish they wouldn't. Uh, you know, don't put anybody in harm's way and. Don't harass any families, because you're really not going to serve your uh, your intentions very well. But, you know, Mark, you know what's, what's interesting? I will bet you the liberal media is not going to put on television tonight all the people that I was surrounded by today, the, uh, the African-Americans that were, that were all over the audience today for Trump, the Latinos that were all over the audience. I sat right next to uh, a lady who happened to be uh, a, a Jewish American. She's a reporter. She was a reporter. For, she is a reporter for the New York Post, Mark, you know, one of the few conservative papers in New York. She is a hardcore pro-Israeli conservative Jew. She says, she says, you know, I'm a little radical. I'm kind of a Zionist. But, uh, you know, they, they won't put those people on television. They won't interview those people. You know, they'll just be looking for the, uh, you know, us, uh, us Heartlander rednecks, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, I think I'd recognize your voice just about anywhere, uh, Tim. And, and when people were yeah. booing Chuck Schumer, I would have sworn I heard your voice in the audience. <laughs> You know, Mark, I, I guess I got I got to go back and look at the program. I'm sure there was like a, uh, I'm sure there was probably a uh, some kind of, I don't know, con- I don't, I don't want to say constitutional, but some kind of reason that he had that speaking part because you know the, the reason that Roy Blunt ran part of the uh, the uh, the inauguration today was by virtue of the fact that he's currently the chairman of the Senate Rules Committee. So uh, Roy would probably tell you, you know, maybe I drew the short straw, but uh, no, he really he really said it was a huge honor to have that thing. So I don't know why Schumer was up there. I'm sure it was because of something to do with, you know, just protocol or something. But, yeah, when he started talking, people were not happy. They wanted none of it. Because there's a guy who is one of the most divisive partisan people on the face of the earth, much less in the United States, who does not want to cooperate, who does not want to give Trump a honeymoon period. You know, and you know what I, I keep saying, Mark? Let these liberals keep doing more of the same. Let them boycott the inauguration. Let them continue to divide because Americans are tired of it. And that's why Trump won. You know, I, I don't pretend that Trump's the most conservative person in the world, but he is reaching across party lines already and doing things to help unite people. And that's what his speech was all about today. He said, I am the president for all of you. And when he, said, he, he also said that when we express our patriotism, that invokes unity among us as well. I thought those were powerful words. I thought it was a great inaugural address. When, when um, I was obviously watching the, the network news coverage, so I don't know where you were when this happened. Did you see Marine One lift off? We heard it. It was okay. right. Uh, it was right behind us. We had we had really nice seats. We were uh, we were right in front of the dais, about three sections back. Wow! Uh, in those main seated areas, it was great vantage point. My daughters were with me today. My wife was with me today. It was a very personal moment for me, as well as a moment that I, I enjoyed with. You know, a million of my closest friends, we were able, so we're up on that, the, uh, you know, kind of the stairs around the Capitol. When you would stand up and turn around, the people stretched as far as the eye could see. So, Mark, I don't know if they showed you in those images on television. You know, it's funny, you know, when the, when, the, when the left has an event, they talk all about crowds and numbers and things. When the right has an event or when conservatives have an event, they never show the crowd, and they never talk about the numbers. It seems. So. Tim, you're you're going to be very disappointed to hear this, but there are already comparison photos on social media showing the crowds for Barack Obama's inauguration uh, uh, overshadowing the crowds from Donald Trump's inauguration today. Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised to, the, to try to <laughs> tear him down. Be. You know that that's all that's all that it's about. So I just want you to know that I put in a good word for you yesterday when I had Roy Blunt on the air. I, oh, when I asked wonderful. him, I said, now, I understand that all these Democrats, these 60 Democrats, are giving up their seats. And uh, Tim Jones said he would be more than happy to take one of those if need be. <laughs> and Senator Blunt said, I think Tim Jones is going to be perfectly happy with his seat. So you must have had a really good seat. <laughs> I was. 
I was. I was. And, and you know, Mark, it was kind of cool because uh, Senator Blunt, you know, let's, you know, the news will all be about Chuck Schumer and the crowd booing him. Senator Blunt had a prominent role in the, uh, so you know, I will say the pregame uh, leading up to the swearing in. And, you know, Senator Blunt is quite the historian. He was a history teacher before he was uh, into elected politics. And so he had some great comments about the momentous occasion this was. He took some passages from past inaugural addresses, you know, the famous ones. You know, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. You know, uh, ask not what your country can do, what you can do for your country. Right. And he said, I'm sure we're going to hear some historic words here today. Missouri State University, uh, the choral group, they had a prominent role. They sang beautifully today. So Missouri got to show off a little bit today. Yeah, and, Cardinal uh, Tim was, Dolan. Yeah, it, it, yeah true. And, and that's that, true. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And it was, it, was, it was a very grand affair, with the exception of some outbursts. Um, I would say, and let me say this, Mark, it seems when conservatives get together in, in, in uh, massive numbers of hundreds of thousands of, you know, maybe, I don't know if the crowd was over a million or not, well, I guess we'll find out. So a lot of people, right? Uh, I was impressed with the fact that the entire day today was orderly, peaceful, efficient, well-run, and everyone was polite. I mean, we got, we got down. Yes, it was crowded, but everyone rolled through security without a problem. We got to our seats early. Um, everybody was more than happy to talk. Where are you from? What do you do? Uh, it, the joy and the happiness, Mark, on people's faces, the relief that uh, even though Hillary Clinton was there today, she was not the one taking the oath, was so evident amongst that crowd and that it was Donald Trump instead. Well, I think a shiver ran down my leg when when Marine One took off. I'll just have to say. I'll well, borrow that from Chris Matthews. Matthews. Something in common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Barack Obama has caused us both to have a shiver run down our leg. How about that? Hey, Tim, thank you so much. Enjoy your trip. Hey, Mark, thank you so much, and uh, we will all get home safely here from D.C., and I hope uh, everyone is excited as much as you and I are about uh, – I, I really think it's not a, just a saying – we're going to make America great again. Yeah, I think you're right.